We have worked with Pam since I first met her, which is more years ago than I want to even count. We had spoken to David Lang about creating music, especially for Pam and a new work. There's a long connection between dance and music. The music affects the dance. It helps create the mood or the environment. Then it was kind of this idea came out, I think, between Pam and David about four by four by four, which would be like that we would have four quartet, four quartet musicians, four dancers, and four composers. So he saw it as an opportunity to reach out to three younger composers who, and the parameter was, as I understand it, that they had never written for dance before. So the lead composer is David Lang. David comes from a place influenced from minimalism. The other composers, one of them was Caroline Shaw. And the music, it's very refreshing, actually, to sit down and to play the music of a young composer that is that accomplished. And what I mean by that is in the sense that it's just, it's very direct and very, um, it makes sense for the instruments. Another of the younger composers is uh, Hannah Lash. Hannah wrote something for our first workshop period, and then she wrote some new things for the second workshop right, right, period. Right, right. Um, she was experimenting. So the fourth composer on the project was Ted Hearn, and he brought us a piece that is very difficult and challenging to play. He did something cute, which is he, um, he snuck in a David Lang piece into his own piece, which you can't hear and you wouldn't know unless, like we didn't know when we played it, but he told us that he had a little hidden uh, quote from David in there. So yeah, it's fun working with Ted. I started working on Broken Story early summer, not long before we went to Mount Tremper to work on it. Mount Tremper Arts is an artist-run, artist-focused contemporary arts center up in the Catskill Mountains, just two hours north of New York City. She doesn't really tell us about the piece in terms of narrative or even that much about her inspiration at the beginning of a, a work. We really just kind of talk about structure and movement and spatial ideas. She did read us a poem that she was inspired by after the piece was made. <laughs> Pam is actually um, very picky with music. She, has, she, has she knows, great ears. She knows she what she music. likes. Yeah. So when you when you know a piece of music and you've picked it, you, you, you go into the project probably with some sort of inspiration. Here, a lot of the music, it was just, just being developed in real time. So that kind of changes the experience. I think that the way the dance was developed, you know, sometimes we're just kind of going like, okay, well we have a minute and a half of music. Let's play that, let's play it for Pam, let's see what she can experiment with. It was fantastic actually, like building it from the ground up. Pam is always really inspired by the space she's in. So even though we knew we were going to be at the Guggenheim, she really used the space at Mount Trempo, which there's a loft space, which is ultimately why I performed up in the space above in the Guggenheim. So that really kind of came from working at Mount Trempo. Watching the change between Mount Tremper and the Guggenheim was really amazing. I mean, at Mount Tremper, some of the ideas were just in the very kind of infancy. While at the Guggenheim, and even between the two different Guggenheim showings, there was a real maturity and um, landing of those ideas. We had an initial kind of residency at the Guggenheim in November, and that was really valuable in terms of figuring out the timings for things because we weren't transferring material from a rehearsal studio just onto the stage because we were using the circumference of the space. So it was in fact a new approach in the theater. The entire theater was a, a stage uh, which was quite dramatic and, and very exciting for the audience and it was very well received. So this is really quite a luxury. <laughs> To have that, you know, step one, step two, and then finally building up to the premiere of the new piece in February. 
In February, the piece was finished, <laughs> just in time. Um, so it, it was different because I had time to really understand what the piece was and figure out how to perform it, understanding my relationship to each of the dancers because the work was complete then. dancers became far more familiar with the oval shape of the seats and the theater and they looked as though they'd always been designed to be there which was wonderful. I think that what's nice about doing kind of pre-performance before the performance, the actual you know uh, uh, premiere, is that you, you get a sense of what the piece is about. So you have this idea like, oh actually, okay this is the thing now, this is the thing that we can do that's possible. And then when you come back to it, you like have a lot more, it's kind of grown in the, the interim. And actually, I think with this piece in particular, I feel like it's constantly changing and it has potential for more change. So I think that it was one thing in July, it was another thing in November, and then it became another thing in February, and we're planning on doing it again. We're gonna keep doing it because it's actually an incredible work but it's gonna to continue to be adjusted and reworked. It's teaching me that it's gonna grow and change and kind of morph as time goes on, and I think that's a really positive thing. It's nice to know that the piece has another life that is going to Bard and probably to several other places, and we're very proud and happy of that. And we look forward to whatever else we're going to be doing next with Pam. We have great faith in what she's doing.